This is part 83 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery progress bar widget. There are two simple steps to get the jQuery progress bar widget on your web page. The first step is to include a div element with an ID on the page and the second step is to write this one line of jQuery code. So let's look at that in action. First, let's include a div element. Let's set the ID attribute. Let's set this to progress bar. Within our jQuery ready function, let's find this div element using the jQuery ID selector. And on that, let's call the progress bar function. Save our changes, reload this web page, and notice that we get the progress bar. There are two types of progress bars in jQuery, determinate progress bar, indeterminate progress bar. Use the determinate progress bar when the actual status can be accurately calculated. Use the indeterminate progress bar to provide user feedback when the actual status cannot be calculated. To get a determinate progress bar, all you need to do is set the value option of the progress bar function to an integer value between 0 and its maximum value. At the moment, we have set it to 65. To get an indeterminate progress bar, set the value option to false. So the value option of the progress bar function supports two different data types, integer and boolean. So let's look at these two in action. So let's go ahead and set the value option. So let's set the value to 80. Save the changes. Reload our page. Now we have a determinate progress bar. Let's set the value to a Boolean type that is false. Save the changes, reload this page, and notice that we get an indeterminate progress bar. So when do we use this indeterminate progress bar? For example, let's say you're uploading a file to the server. You don't know how long you know it takes to upload the file, but you want to provide some feedback to the user. So at that point, you can use this indeterminate progress bar. When do we use determinate progress bar? If you know how long you know or what percentage of the work is completed, that's when you can use the determinate progress bar. Now, let's look at an example of taking the value from a drop-down list and then setting that as the value for the progress bar. So we want to bind this progress bar to this drop-down list. So here is the HTML for the select element that you see here. So let's paste that within the form section right here. First, we need that literal text which will prompt the user to select percentage. And we need the select element in the interest of time. I have already typed this. So the select element has got an ID, DDL percentage, and we have options from 10 to 100. And after the select element, we need a button. So input type equals button. Let's give it an ID. Let's set it to BTN. Let's also set the value attribute. Let's set it to set value. And let's include two HTML break elements. Save the changes, reload our page. So we get the UI, which is similar to what we have here. Now, within our jQuery code, I'm going to remove this JavaScript object. So the progress bar function on that development is going to initialize the progress bar for us. Now, when we select the value from the drop-down list and when we click the button, that's when we want to set the selected value from the drop-down list as the value for the progress bar. So let's find the button element. I'm going to use the jQuery ID selector again. The ID of the button is BTN. And we want to wire up the click event handler. When we click the button, we want to execute some code. So what do we want to do? We want to you know, find that div element once again. So I'm actually going to cache the DOM element in a variable. So let's go ahead and create a variable here. Let's call it progress bar div equals the DOM element. And let's use the variable instead of finding it on the, in the DOM every time. So within the click event handler, when we click the button on the DOM element, call the progress bar function once again. And this time, we want to set the value option 
Okay, so I'm simply going to say value equal to where is the value going to come from? The value is going to come from this drop down list. The drop down list has got an ID, DDL percentage. So let's use the jQuery ID selector one more time, find the drop down list, and to get the selected value, let's use the val function. And this function is going to return that value in a string format. We need to convert that to an integer. To do that, I'm going to use parse int function. So let's save the changes reload our page and let's select 90% uh, for some reason look at that the progress bar doesn't show up that's basically because I, I think we have a syntax error here since this is an option we don't require a semicolon here if you have another option you would use a comma like that since we don't have an option let's remove that comma save the changes reload this page now let's go ahead and select 90 and look at that, 90% of this progress bar is filled. All right. At the moment, if you look at the progress bar that we have here, the value is not displayed on the progress bar. Now we want to display the value like this. Okay, so let's see how to achieve that. Now we need to make changes both to the HTML as well as the jQuery code. So here we have a development. Inside the development, I'm going to include a span element. So the span is the child element. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this progress bar label for displaying the value. And I'm going to set style attribute. So where do we want to place the span element? You know, basically we are going to use the span element to display the value. Okay. So we want that value to be present in the center. So we want the horizontal alignment to be in the center and vertical alignment also to be in the center. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to set the style attribute and I'm going to use the position property. So position absolute. So I want to position the span element in, our, in absolute relation to the parent development. And from left side 50% and from the top 20% okay because if you set from top 50% you know it's going to start from halfway that means it looks like um, you know it's pushed down a little bit that's why we are starting at 20% okay so let's save our changes now let's include some text there for example ABC to see where it is appearing and then we will modify the styles as required let's save our changes reload this page and look at this ABC is right here so we expected that to be in the middle of this progress bar so why is that that's basically because it's positioning you know it's taking this left 50% and top 50% in relation to the you know this this browser window itself that's not what we want we want that to be relative to the parent element and to tell that we have to again set the style attribute here and set the position attribute to relative okay so that should fix that issue let's reload this page and look at that we get it where we want it to be all right so let's remove this default text from there Okay, so we are going to use that label to display the value. And within our jQuery code, whenever we change the value of the progress bar, an event is raised, and that is change event. So when change event is raised, we want to execute some code. So let's include a function. And what do we want to do? We want to find this span element. And the span element has got an ID progress bar label so let's use that ID find the jQuery ID selector you know use the jQuery ID selector and find that span element and on that let's use the text function and we want to retrieve the progress bar value so I'm going to use this progress bar div again dot progress bar function and we want 
value property. So it's going to return us the current value of the progress bar. To that, if you want to append a percentage symbol, simply append that. Okay, so let's save our changes, reload this page, and let's select 80%. Look at that. And the percentage value is now displayed on the progress bar. So here we have the HTML, and on this page we have the jQuery code required. Thank you for listening and have a great day.